when she swallowed a jade bead through an immaculate conception. Chimalma gave birth to the twins, the bright and morning star. When she'd given birth to the twins, she was walking through the woods one day and she came across a warrior, Mixcoatl. He fired arrows above her head to frighten her so that he could sleep with her. He fired some beneath her legs and she bowed her head to avoid the arrows that he fired. And so we see Mixcoatl shown as an arrowhead bowing down to, to convey part of the story. So here we have the story. This is all from the tomb. This is all from Lord Pecal, don't forget, of Mexico. So there we have the, the transparencies again. So again, we're being told that the guy in the tomb was born through an immaculate conception. Now when we have a look at the next picture from the mural at Bonham Pack and put them on top of each other, we're told that the guy in the tomb was born in a stable surrounded by animals with horns. And this picture shows Kamashli, the god of hunting. And we have two midwives here, one on either side, restraining the mother of Kamashli. She's being restrained in the center. Out of her womb comes an animal with two sets of horns down here. So she's giving birth to the stag with two sets of horns, or two stags, which was, and she's being licked by the stag on her head. This tells us that this guy who was born through an immaculate conception, you can see it a bit clearer there, hopefully. So here we have one midwife. There's another midwife. Here's the mother of Kamashli in gray with her legs open. Here we see the head coming out with brown horns and pink horns, the two stags. And here we have the stag in the stable licking the mother during the painful process of childbirth. Now this is at nine degrees, the 999. And this is the picture without the colors. The next one, I'll just show you, go straight to it. Now the two stags, shown in grey here, are holding up Jaipitotek. And his legs are crossed, and his arms are crossed, and he's holding two wooden sticks. His face is like the lion, the mane of a lion. And the lion, in ancient mythology, it was associated with the sun. So this tells us that the two stags, who are holding up this guy by the elbows, with two wooden sticks, tells us that this is the man who died on the cross made of two wooden sticks. So here we have the two stags. Can we see that? Okay. And then the final picture in this sequence, we have the two stags applauding Jaipitotek, who was half stag, half man. Here we have the two stags applauding him. Jaipitotek comes out at the end of the performance with his two sticks and bows to the audience. And that's the end of this show because these are like plays. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And they all come out at the end and bow. Just like the man in the tomb, the mosaic mask, we saw him at the end bowing. It's a sequence throughout the whole production. And uh, this is at 66.6 .6 degrees, those transparencies. That's the number of the beast in Revelation. He who has understanding, let him count the number of the beast. It is 66, 666. Now, Here's another one from Bon Pack, another of the paintings. And again, this is where the archaeologists went badly wrong. This is where they took the wrong turn. They walked into this chamber and they said, gee, look at all these guys. They've got blood dripping from their fingernails. These must be prisoners. And these must be the kings who have captured them and cut their fingernails off. Wow, these people were animals. Well, it's not quite like that. If we take one of the drawings here, and then we see the, drug, the blood dripping out a bit better there. And now we take the sketch. This guy's lying back. And those are the so-called kings with animal skins over them. If we put one, whenever we get these dots here, these are epicenters, one, two, three, uh, on his arm. Again, the resolution's no good. We've got two dots there. These are epicenters for different pictures. So when we put one on top of the other, like so, What we see now is that it's not war. What we've got is this guy's washing this guy's hair. This guy's washing this guy's hair. This guy's having oral sex with this guy. So it's making love, not war. So it's the entire opposite of what they... But they don't want the archaeologists to figure these. Archaeologists don't believe in God. 
You don't want an archaeologist going to heaven, do you? The last thing you can afford when you're writing this stuff down is to allow people who are profane to get to heaven. And going back to what we said earlier, why didn't God make us all look the same? Like the Model T Ford concept. It makes sense. Because if we all looked the same, your kid would look like next door's kid. And you might love next door's kid by mistake, thinking it was your kid. So then you get to heaven by mistake. <laughs> and that's not allowed. So God said, let's make everybody look different, because then you'll love your kid. And there's nothing in the Bible that says you've got to love your kid. The Bible says you've got to love your neighbor's kid. And say anything about your own kid. And if next door neighbor's kid looks like you, <laughs> we got a real problem. We saw the, uh, the mask there, the feathered hat, and there we have Tutankhamun with his wife, Ankhus and Amun, on the back of the golden throne in his tomb at uh, the Valley of the Kings, wearing the same hat. And Tutankhamun, of course, the son of God, was the feathered snake to his people, just as Lord Pekau was a feathered snake to his people. Tutankhamun has 26 bands on the front of his headdress. And uh, he was the feathered snake. And there we have the sun, just like the Mexican sun shield, which has got the 136640 encoded into it. This is the eagle and the snake, the feathered snake, which is God. Now, Lord Pekau, the name derives from Pascal, which is a Catholic word for Easter, because Jesus died at Easter. And as we start to investigate all of the evidence from all of these civilizations, we start to get a clearer picture of what was going on. Now, James Churchward was an American, and in 1927, he was an explorer. He was working for the British as a secret agent in Brahmaputra in Tibet, in India. And he went to a monastery, and the monks in the monastery showed him some ancient tablets called the Nakal tablets made by the Nakal people 25,000 years ago on the lost island of Lemuria. And the monks said to him, that this is what the tablets mean. That's the sun, and the sun changed its radiation. And it heated up the land, and the land sank beneath the waves, and 25 million inhabitants of Mu, or Lemuria, were lost. And if we look at the sun, we see the warped neutral sheet of the sun for the first time. Now these tablets are 25,000 years old. Here we have a snake on the face of the sun representing the neutral warp on the sun that we saw earlier, the model of the record. If you remember, we had the record there with a warp on the side of it representing the neutral sheet. So it seems that the, the, uh, not only could the feather snake represent in a simple way the soul in the air, the, the feathers, and the snake on the ground, it looks like they were trying to tell us it, it, the feathered snake relates to the neutral warp on the sun. And all of these people associated with the feathered snake, here we have Tutankhamun with a, a ring of sunflower seeds, the sun is the feathered snake. And what we're told is that uh, 